Jesus Christ, the great head of the Christian church, to our beloved pastor, who's allowed me to stand this morning. Thank God for all of my preaching brothers and all of you that are my brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. We just praise God for another opportunity. He's allowed us to be in the service and to be able to stand and tell the truth on Jesus. Turn with me to the gospel recorded by Matthew, the 15th chapter. The gospel recorded by Matthew, the 15th chapter. We'll begin reading at verse 22. Everybody there? Reads on this wise. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region, cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. His disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. He answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered her and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. The Lord will allow us to put a thought to this text this morning. We want to speak briefly on even a dog has its day. Brothers and sisters, here the master has left Jewish territory, for he has departed from Galilee to visit a Gentile area. Bible says in verse 21, then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Jesus had just left Jewish territory where he has a debate with the Pharisees over their man-made traditions. He departs and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. We gotta understand this region was a pagan Gentile region. One that was sunk in the grossest idolatry worship. It was a region polluted with depravity and wickedness. Jesus himself calls this uh, a wicked region over in Matthew chapter 11. Bible says, and behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region. Cried out to him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. Jesus has went out from the religious Pharisees and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon, this wicked, pagan, Gentile region. And the Bible says, behold, literally, uh, that God is telling the church, look at this woman of Canaan real good. Because it says, behold. Look at a real good that came from this region. The first thing we need to see is, if we get honest this morning, that is, we all came from this region. Not geographically, but spiritually. We have all been in the region of Tyree and Sidon. 
For not only did this woman come from a wicked place, but notice the Bible says she was a woman of Canaan. And Canaanites were traditional enemies of Israel in the Old Testament. In other words, this woman was a Gentile woman. This woman is a picture of the church before conversion. Ephesians 2 and 12 says that at that time you are without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and with God in this world. That was our condition when we were spiritually in the region of Tyre and Sidon. We have to understand the Gentiles were unclean as far as the Jews were concerned. In fact, the Jews referred to Gentiles as dogs. Even though Christ, us, even though Christ has spoken of the prophecy of Isaiah in Matthew 12, 18 through 21 concerning himself and the Gentiles, when he said, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break in a smoking flax. He will not quench till he sends forth justice to victory. He came, he came in his name Gentiles with trust. Praise God that regardless of what a person may think about you, God's word shall come past concerning you. Is that real good news? The Bible shows us that this was a woman of Canaan. This Gentile woman came from the region of Tyre and Sidon. Cried out for the master. It is the good news this morning that if you belong to God, regardless of your circumstance, position, address, or environment, God's got a way to bring you to a point in life to cry out to a savior. I don't care how bad you are or where you come from. You alone to God, he will bring you to the place in life where you will cry out to the Savior. Notice she never would have cried out to Jesus unless Jesus showed up in her region. In other words, she didn't go find Jesus. Jesus came to her region. I wish I had some help in here. Christ, even with his knowing this particular region, shows up with a salvation purpose in mind. Yeah. Jesus didn't have a problem with going to a wicked place. Uh, Good God Almighty, if you belong to Christ, I don't care how wicked of a place you're in, how bad of a region you're in, it, it, it won't Christ come to where you are in your messed up condition. He came to save sinners. He came to save wicked folk. He came to save a wretch just like you and me. I wish I could have some help in here. Thank God that Christ didn't leave us in the shape we were in. The Bible says, she cried out to him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. First of all, the cry for mercy literally means a blessing that is an act of divine favor or compassion withholding of the punishment or judgment our sins do deserve. This cry means, means uh, for mercy means forgiveness and atoning work that turns back the wrath of God. It literally is saying, I know my condition. I know I don't deserve anything. I know I've been wrong in my life. I know I'm a guilty sinner. I know I fall short of your glory. But Lord, look beyond all of my faults and see all of my needs. Oh Lord, I need your mercy this morning. I need his mercy. Do y'all need his mercy this morning? She not only cries out for mercy for herself, but for her daughter as well. For she says, my daughter is severely demon possessed. She speaks realizing that she herself coming from that wicked region in her condition needed as just as much mercy as a demon possessed daughter did. 
She knows the only one who could deal with the devil was the Lord himself. She knew the only way she could get forgiveness up and deliverance would come, would come if Jesus would have mercy on me. When she approached Jesus as the son of David, she was really putting herself on Jewish ground. And this she could not do because she was a Gentile. For that was the title that the Jews addressed of the Messiah. This woman apparently had heard about Jesus and knew his reputation had spread into out all this region. For in Luke 6 and 17 it says a great multitude of people out of Judea and Jerusalem from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him and to be healed of all their diseases. In other words, she knows that Jesus is a merciful miracle worker. Could God of mine Notice this woman made no real specific request other but mercy. She didn't bring her daughter with her. She didn't ask Jesus to go to a house. She simply tells of her affliction and lets this woeful plea, this woeful tale plea for itself. But the Bible says Jesus answered her not a word. That's what he says. <laughs> the merciful physician withholds his aid. In the face of misery, the master is silent. But we have to understand that sometimes in his delay, there is the discipline of love. For he acts as though he does not hear her, that he may bring forth perseverance and faith. In other words, a blessing delayed is not always a blessing denied. How many times have you cried out to the Lord and sometimes it seems as though heaven is silent. But yet and still you find yourself persevering. You find yourself keep on keeping on. You find yourself depending on the Lord Jesus Christ. Even when heaven is silent, you find yourself waking your way to the Lord's house, giving him the praise. Ain't that real, real good news? The Bible says, Christ answered her, not a word. And his disciples came, listen to this, and urged him saying, send her away. For she cries out after us. After us. The New Living Translation says, Then the disciples urged him to send her away, tell her to go away. They said, She is bothering us with all her begging. What do you do when you cry out to the Lord and the Lord is silent? Well, notice the Bible didn't say she ran off. It didn't say she had a fainting fit. No, 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 it didn't say she pitched a pity party. Good God Almighty, the Bible says he answered her not a word. Yet, yet, notice he was there, so she was already blessed because he showed up. In other words, she, she has faith to believe because he showed up, something is going to happen. Because he showed up, she understands just to be in his presence, my life is going to be changed. Put down a money. She kept standing. She kept depending. She kept trusting and waited on the Lord. I believe that's why David said I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined his ear unto me and heard my cry. And it's good news that Jesus will hear his children's cry. In spite of how bad it looks, you better learn to keep trusting and depending and waiting on the Lord. But isn't it strange? Isn't it strange? That this woman's dependency on Christ bothered the disciples. 
For if you look in verse 22, the Bible says she cried out to him. But in verse 23, they said she cries out after us. Wait a minute now. She wasn't crying out to them anyway. But yet the fact that they knew her background. They knew where she came from. They looked down on her as a Gentile dog. A Gentile dog. She's from the region of Tyre and Sidon. In other words, to them, she had no business in that fellowship. Good God Almighty, y'all know how some church folk are. She has no business coming in here looking like that. He has no business coming in the church smelling like that. Good God Almighty, but what I want to know, what does this folk, why does folk dependency on Christ, why does folk cry out to Christ by the other folk? Why does my dependency on Christ, why does my cry for Christ bother you? Because watch this, you may know, you may know my background, you may know where I come from, but guess what, you got a background too. Good God Almighty, how does my cry bother you? Good God Almighty, cause I wasn't talking to you no way, I was talking to my Savior. All of us are sinners, depending on the Lord Jesus Christ. I wish I had some real folk in here. Jesus, he finally speaks up and never even acknowledged the disciples. He says to the woman, I will not see it except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Listen to this. The reason the Jews looked down at Gentiles as dogs was because they thought they were God's only chosen people. <laughs> they failed to realize that when the Bible says in Matthew 1 21, he shall save his people from their sins. And in John 10 and 11, when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He was talking about both Jews and Gentiles. Right, yes, sir. Right, right. Let me prove it. In John 10 and 16, he says, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them I also must bring that they may hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Good God Almighty. For what they fail to realize is no natural birth into a chosen nation can provide what can come only through a supernatural rebirth through faith. In other words, over in Romans 2 and 11, when the Bible says there is no respect of persons with God, that means God won't save all Jews just because they're Jews. Right, right, right. And he won't save any Gentile based on anything they done either because God shows no personal favoritism. But whoever, whoever he does save, whoever he does chooses, he saves by his own sovereign will. Because he will have mercy on whomever he will have mercy and he will show compassion on whomever he will show compassion. He's God and he's God all by himself and can't nobody, can't no devil in hell stop him from blessing me. Oh, ain't that good news? and to say that which is lost. That's his mission. And what I love about this woman, she understands 
the purpose for which he came. Let me prove it. The Bible says, then she came and worshiped him. Take your time. Take your time. Y'all see that in the Bible? Then she came and worshiped him. My, my. Notice that even when she knew what the disciples felt about her, it didn't stop her from worshiping him. She's getting on their nerves, but she keeps worshiping him. She understood what a lot of folk in the church today don't understand. It wasn't about her and the disciples. It's about her and Jesus. It wasn't about her relationship with them. It was about her relationship with him. Is that right? In other words, my worship don't depend on y'all. Y'all worship don't depend on us. But our worship depends on him. Is that right? He came to save lost sinners. Right, right. She understand she's a lost sheep in need of a savior. He's the only one that can have mercy. He's the only one that can help her. Good God Almighty, when we realize it's all about Jesus and me, you won't let nobody stop you from crying out to the master. When you understand it's about your relationship and Jesus, you won't let nobody hinder your worship. When you understand it's about you and Jesus, can't nobody keep you from waving your hands. When you understand it's about you and Jesus, can't nobody keep you from opening your mouth, giving you the praise and love. And watch this. If I can bother you with my dependency and worship to Christ, you must not have your own. Because you shouldn't have that much time to watch my worship. You ought to be worshiping your own self. You ought to have your own personal cry to the Lord Jesus Christ. What you looking at me for? You need to be looking at him. This woman, she cries for mercy. Tells of her daughter's condition. Worship Jesus. Watch this. Even before she gets an answer. (laughs) He hasn't healed her yet. But the Bible says she worships. In advance. She knows Jesus is already worthy. Should be praised. Just because he showed up in the wicked region, I'm gonna worship him not because of what he done, but because of who he is. Philippians 4 6 said, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Y'all hear that? We need to learn to worship God and thank God like Elder Wilkerson preached last week for what he's already done. Preach! Worship him in advance. Thank him just for being God and being God all by himself. Her daughter has yet to be healed. But the Bible says she's already worshiping. The fact that Jesus showed up in a region led her to 
cry out for mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him all of her troubles. Yeah, yeah. Even when she was looked down on, talked about, because Jesus showed up and led her to worship him. Yeah. Right, right. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but his presence should lead the church into worship. Is that right? I don't care what happens, his presence ought to lead the church to worship. Not the choir, but his presence. Not the preacher, but his presence. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Could God Almighty notice she just didn't worship? But the Bible says she worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. Yeah. Even in her pain, even in her confusion, yes, even though she knew folk wanted her to be thrown away, oh, she no. still worshiped him with a Jesus dependency. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, she knows can't nobody do me like you, Jesus. And I ain't notice she Notice she now doesn't call him the son of David as a Jewish Messiah. She now knows he's the savior of all the chosen lost sinners. She says, Lord, master, Lord, my owner, Lord, my ruler. Y'all hear me? She says, help me. I'm a lost sheep. I need your mercy, Lord. She knew all of our help comes from the Lord. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Notice, watch this. Notice, then Jesus tests her faith and proves her humility. Oh. I'm almost out of your way. I ain't going to be too much longer. Yeah. The Bible says, Jesus, watch this. She worshiped him uh -huh. and it moved Jesus to respond. Uh -huh. Y'all well, like yeah, hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times we wonder why he's not responding because we're not worshiping him. And not only did she worship him, but she approached him right. Y'all yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hear what I'm saying? Yeah. The Bible says Jesus answered and said, it is not good to take the little children's bread. Mm. Come on. And throw it to little dogs. Notice the woman agrees with Christ in verse 27. For she said, yes, Lord. As to say, I agree. That a dog will count it as nothing. Notice she never gets upset over what the Jews saw her to be. Which was a dog. Right. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Matter of fact, she's really claiming to be everything she said they said she was apart from Christ. <laughs> she knew where she came from. She knew her condition. She, she, she knew her daughter's condition. She knew her inability to help herself, but she had a Jesus dependency. She said, yeah, I agree. I am a dog. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. yeah, hear what I'm saying? Because once you really know who he is, it will show you who you really not. You are lost sheep in need of a savior. I wish I had somebody in here. You, you got to know you're a sinner in need of a savior. You got to know that you're nothing and he's everything. Good God, man. Jesus says in John 6 and 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the ones who come to me I will by no means cast out. Ain't y'all glad when Jesus found us in our messed up condition? He said, that's my daughter. Y'all didn't hear me. He came to where I was. In my messed up condition, saw me, found me, and said, that's my dog. That's my dog. That's my dog. In the name of all you here, good God Almighty, and you happen, he looked at you and 
Jesus here. That's my dog. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good God Almighty. That's my dog. Notice, she never said she wasn't a dog. No, 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 no. That's right. No, no. But she wasn't a dog that would take the bread from the master and count it as nothing. In other words, she said, yes, Lord, I agree. That kind of dog doesn't deserve bread. The children get from, them, from, from you because they never acknowledge you as master anyway. But, but she says, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. She said, yeah, I'm a dog, but you're my master. I'm not a dog that would get the children bread and count it as useless, but I'm a little dog that can worship just for the crumbs that fall up from the master's table. She understands that she, who the master is and where the crumb when the crumbs fall from his table, those crumbs would change your life. Those crumbs would pick you up. Those crumbs would turn you around. Those crumbs will make you whole. Those crumbs will heal your body. Those crumbs will bless your soul. Anybody in here for these crumbs. She didn't say, I need a whole loaf. Because she said, I'm a little dog. A little dog, just give me some crumbs. See, the problem is, when you think you're a big dog, that's the problem. But you got to know, you're a little dog in the hands of a big God. Anybody in here? No, you big little dog. I'm a little dog, I'm a dog. but I'm his little dog. I'm, yeah. I'm his little dog. I'm almost out of your way. Yeah. Yeah. This woman asked for mercy. She asked for deliverance. She asked for healing and to be helped. She had a mind to worship and thank Jesus. She knows he's the savior of the lost sheep. I can worship God for the crumbs for every morning. We got brand new mercies. That's a crumb from the master's table. As I read, he came to the region of my messed up sinful condition. That's a crumb from his table. She gets honest about herself. She says, I'm a little dog. You're my master. Jesus never acknowledged her faith until she got honest about who she was or who she wasn't and who he was. Y'all see that? We better praise God that even a dog has his day. Because when she Got to read with Jesus. Christ now identifies her not as a little dog anymore. Uh -huh. Am I in the Bible? Yeah. For he says, O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from the very hour. The woman never even said, where her daughter was. Oh, what her name was. But Jesus is so much God. All he had to do was speak a word. And healing took place. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be so. Let it be to you as you desire. In other words, because of her faith, a sinner now has a savior. Because of her faith, a daughter got delivered. 
I don't know about y'all, but there's power in his word. Jesus says, let it be to you as you desire. There's power in his word. Because all he did was speak a word and healing took place. 